Okay, so computer project video one. Um, so here we've got an old thermal take case that I am uh, changing a bit. Um, so here, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is water cool this thing. And um, what I wanted to do here was, in case there's any leaks, I wanted to make sure that, you know, it's um, I'm doing as much as I can to make sure that uh, the components don't get damaged. So um, obviously this is where the CPU is at. I want to move the CPU so that it is uh, at the bottom instead of uh, the top like it is right here. Uh, and the reason for that partially is because um, the graphics card would sit in here like this. Um, and obviously, you know, if let's just say anything was to drip from the CPU, it would drip down uh, onto my graphics card. And then this is where um, the power supply would be, um, which obviously I've taken out already. Um, and I want to move that to the top, um, which would be kind of like over there. Um, so yeah, so that's, uh, that's how it uh, initially started out. I've actually already worked on uh, my other case, so I'm gonna, that'll be the next video of the, the changed case. And then I'll put, I'll probably put the, um, motherboard in there just so that we can uh, take a look. So, all right, that will be the next video. Okay, so here's video two. Um, this is the actual um, case that I changed. So uh, if you'll notice here, I popped new rivets in uh, there. These ones stayed, these two. There were probably the only two in the whole case that actually I uh, didn't have to remove. Um, so here's, you know, two more here, two more here. Uh, that's less important. But uh, anyways, what I wanted to, uh, you know, talk about is basically what I had to do was actually flip the top uh, and the bottom. So obviously this is the bottom, this is the top. Um, and then we've reoriented uh, where the uh, motherboard sits in here. So obviously it, in the, old, or the other video, you know, the, the motherboard sat up here. Uh, and faced uh, this way, which again kind of probably kind of looks a little bit funny. You're probably wondering, hey, did he just you know flip the whole thing around? Well, no, um, you can't do it quite like that um, because then the top would be the bottom, and the feet here, you know, would be sticking out the top. <laughs> uh, so again, I had to you know pop those all those rivets out, and uh, I actually did reverse this plate that the uh, motherboard sits on. So, anyways, as you can see here, the CPU now sits at the bottom. Anyone with a keen eye will, will notice that this isn't the same uh, motherboard, but um, you know the, they're oriented in the same exact way. Um, so again, here's the feet now. Um, this will be uh, where the motherboard sits, or sorry, the uh, CPU will be obviously right here, because it has to be. Um, here's where I'll either use this uh, PCI 3.0 or this one, I'm not sure. Uh, which maybe I'll maybe I'll do two graphics cards. Who knows? Maybe I'll get crazy with it. Uh, and then the power supply will sit uh, up here. So um, we'll I'll obviously put it or take another video once this is um, or once everything is is actually in here. Um, but I'm going to do some other things too. I probably probably going to end up um, painting this thing too. Um, I haven't decided uh, if I'm going to for sure do that or not because that's going to be. You know, kind of a pain in the ass, but uh, <laughs> uh, the other thing here is I want to do uh, plexiglass. Uh, I do want to do a couple of plexiglass uh, plates here. Let's just see if I've got. Um, we'll find us find us one of the side covers here. Yeah, here, here's one of the original side covers. So um, normally, you know, this side cover would sit um, in here. That's maybe gonna be a little. Not great. There we go. Okay. So it, it just slides up, uh, slides up right into here, uh, and then it you know has two two spots here where it bolts in in the back, one here and one here. Um, problem with that, uh, the thing that I don't like about these is obviously you can't see inside, so it's you know boring. These are just this is a cheap. I think this was like thirty dollars ten years ago. You know, so super cheap. Um, not not anything real impressive again pretty boring Should put that back there um, So yeah, so we'll do the next 
Uh, I'm not, actually, I'm not sure what the next video will look like, um, just because, you know, I'm right in the middle of the project, so we'll see. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, it's done. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what I did and why I did it. Um, so uh, me and my buddy, or my buddy and I, <laughs> uh, both upgraded our PCs at the same time, and... Uh, we kind of found out that, and it was kind of funny, that we actually both had the same cases uh, for our old old ones. It's old thermal take. I don't know. These are like probably $30 cases back in the day. Um, and uh, because, because I ended up not being able to use a single thing out of this PC on my new one, uh, I decided to make a little project out of it. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit quick about really like my methodology and why I did the things I did and whether or not I think it was actually worth it at the end of the day. Um, so these are ATX cases. Uh, anybody that's made a computer probably recognizes the, or understands what that is. Um, basically, uh, you know, with an ATX case or with these ones specifically, uh, you've got the power supply that goes down here in the bottom. Uh, your graphics card will go up here somewhere, and then um, obviously all of our like you know mouse, mice, and whatever keyboards will you know connect in the back, along with you know your network cable and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, the reason why I didn't want to leave it like this was because this is the first time I've ever, or this was the first time I had ever tried uh, liquid cooling uh, any PC. And uh, <laughs> I was worried that it wasn't going to uh, go well. So I wanted to, um, you know, kind of swap the, or change things up so that in case there was any leaks, I wouldn't damage anything. So um, what I decided to do, and there's an argument to me made that I should have just, well, so anyways, normally, all right, so our, our CPU would go up here somewhere. Um, the graphics card, again, because of the orientation of the case would go, you know, somewhere here. And then the power supply would be at the bottom. The problem with that is if anything leaks specifically from the uh, CPU water block, it's going to leak directly down onto the graphics card. And then it's going to leak down into the power supply. So again, um, what I maybe should have done was just flip this upside down. Um, and I think there is a case to be made for that. Not a, not a computer case. <laughs> An argument to be made. <laughs> Um, so instead, what we've got here is now because I've oriented it this way, I could have, you know, put the, the PC or the CPU would go somewhere around here. Um, obviously, the uh, the graphics card would go up here, and then the uh, power supply would be up in the top. Now the problem is, obviously, we don't have the the holes for the feet anymore. Um, now, you know, whatever, I probably could have just drilled maybe some holes into here into the bottom to put the the feet back on, but. You know, I don't know. It, it didn't look like it was going to orient very well. Um, so that was a problem. And then on top of that, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the front of the case. Uh, the back of the case is completely fine. Everything is oriented there exactly the way I wanted it. So anyways, long story short, what I ended up doing was drilling out uh, all of the rivets. And what I did was I flipped the front here, um, basically. And then I made the top the bottom. And uh, everything worked out exactly perfectly the way I wanted it to, to be completely honest. I, the, it's just, you know, because of the, um, uh, the front and the back are basically oriented the same as well as the top and the bottom, all the rivets just ended up, you know, working out perfectly. So, anyways, let's get to the actual uh, PC. So, um, this is, oh my gosh, we're getting some really bad glare off of that. So that's gross. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, sorry about that. And I'm going to swap this to the uh, to sideways. This will look a little bit better. So here's my power supply up at the top. We've got the uh, these gross cables, which I couldn't really do anything with because I didn't want to, or I wasn't able to run them through the back because I decided to go with pe plexiglass and there wasn't any room on the back side. So anyways, you've got this ancient uh, graphics card. I think this is a, <laughs> I think this is either a two or a four gig. Uh, graphics card, so we're not working with, um, you know, amazing stuff. <laughs> um, and to be completely clear, this is not a, this is not a performance PC. This thing is like 10 years old. But again, I wanted to try out water cooling for the first time, and um, <clears throat> it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, and then go with this, uh, obviously, with a Dr. Pepper theme, because I love Dr. Pepper. I mean, and if you don't, well, then... You've made, you know, some bad choices with your life, but, you know, who's judging here? All right, so anyways, this is the water block. This is about $20. 
Um, <clears throat> obviously, I wanted to go as cheap as I possibly could with everything. You can see how cheap it is because the um, the hoses have writing on them. I think this is like a, a $6 um, Menard special. <laughs> uh, I think this is like three, or I think I bought three feet worth of tubing because that's all it came in. And um, I think I've got enough left that I can do another set. I've been kicking around the idea of using brown dye to really go the you know the full the full Dr Pepper theme to to make it look like it's got pop running through it, but we'll see. I haven't completely decided yet because I think it actually does look pretty cool when it's uh, when it's just you know just distilled water in here. So, uh, anyways, this pump here, um, uh, and, and you can tell. I mean, I mean, maybe this is obvious. We've got barbed fittings everywhere. I didn't go with obviously rigid tubing because again, this is the first time I've ever done this. And um, <clears throat> I didn't know what I was doing and didn't want to screw around with rigid tubing because it looked like a total pain in the butt. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe if I ever do this, and I probably won't, if I ever, you know, liquid cool anything else, I might go with that option. But anyways, this is a $20, I think this is considered a solar, what did they call this, a solar water pump? I don't know what that means. I don't. I don't know what these are supposed to be for, but it's a two gallon per minute and it's a 12 volt pump and that's all I cared about. Um, and what I did here was to wire it up. Um, I don't, I'm not, oh, I've got the, I actually wired this up kind of nice. Um, it's probably the one thing that I did fairly recently. Anyways, what you can't see is there's only two, there's two wires that go to this. And uh, what I did was I cut off the case fan of, I think it was my fan that went on the back here. <clears throat> Which, by the way, I am still waiting on a case fan for this because the two case fans that I pulled out of here were just completely garbage and they barely moved. Um, but anyways, I did grab the, uh, the, the wiring uh, off of that and, um, where does it go here? Yeah, it goes right to the board. So this is just a chassis fan. Um, I knew that the, obviously I wanted the pump to run all the time, so I really didn't. It didn't really matter where I plugged this thing in at. Obviously, the chassis fan it, it worked just fine. So, um, anyways, all right. So that is that. That's how I wired that up. This wiring back in the back, if you notice there, that looks horrible, and I don't care because who cares? <laughs> um, but anyways, that is actually a CPU uh, four four pin connector, and that runs. Um, back behind there and then up the side and you can't see it for a little ways there because I actually did hide it behind the chassis a bit and that runs up to the fan for the uh, for the radiator. Um, this radiator is the wrong size. When I ordered this thing I did not look at the size at all. So a major mistake but who cares it ended up working out just fine. Um, this fan is actually a CPU fan. This is not a case fan, which is what you would you know, normally use. Well, you'd use a static pressure fan, but um, I didn't want to. I just, you know, it was cheap and didn't care because <laughs> uh, I didn't know if any of this stuff was going to work anyway. But um, here, if you notice there, I had to do a little uh, bracket work here. This is actually, um, actually, you'll find a, a couple of pieces, and I'll talk about those in a bit here. But what I did, this is actually a bracket that's made from the side of this case. Um, so the, obviously the sides of the case were, you know, just thin steel, um, garbage junk, looked like crap. Didn't want to use them. So I went with the plexiglass instead. And I think it looks a lot better. I think it looks really cool. But, um, anyways, so there's a bracket there. There's actually a bracket on the opposite side. You can kind of see it back there. So I went kitty corner. So obviously this top left corner and the bottom right corner. Um, and then, then it's drilled, or uh, there's there's screws that lead or that go from that bracket. You can't really see them back there. I apologize. You kind of, you kind of can, I guess. Um, but that that screws into the actual fan itself through the backside. So, um, <clears throat> so that's how I rigged that all up. Um, I decided not to paint the radiator itself. Um, I was worried that because the radiator is not the, I mean, it's really not the right size. And um, I didn't really want to put, you know, I didn't want to paint the front of it just because, you know, I was a little worried about what that would do as far as cooling, um, you know, to put a bunch of extra spray paint on there. And uh, I don't know. Anyway, so I didn't do that. But um, and I think that I think it's it's probably fine. Um, but the other reason why I bought this. So the, the, let's be real. The uh, the radiator itself is twelve dollars. Uh, 
<laughs> and I, I specifically went for this one because it already had these, like, I, mean, I didn't have to buy separate fittings. Um, these are just built in. So I didn't have to buy anything separate. So, you know, again, me being uh, cheap and not caring much about the actual performance of this, that's, that's the route I went. So 12 bucks there. So 12 bucks for the radiator, 20 bucks for the pump, and 20 bucks for the, uh, the, um, the water block, and then $6 for the holes. So um, that's about all I paid for. Um, to be fair, though, I did have to buy uh, fittings. I, I had to buy two. Um, so yeah, let's actually talk about that. So, uh, the whole reason why I did this, um, this project again was because I had an idea. I was like, oh man, why don't I use a Dr. Pepper bottle as a reservoir? Um, so that's what I did. And the top, I didn't need to really do anything fancy. Um, actually let's, let's pull this off here and you can just take a look inside here. Um, I think these fittings cost, I think they were, they were four, four, was it $4 or was it $8 for a set of four? Um, and my camera, because it's not being very steady here, you can't really see, but yeah, that's, that's really crappy, but this isn't threaded or anything. This is really just kind of hanging onto the top of the, uh, the cap here. Um, but I did, I grabbed the, um, the O-ring because there's actually an O-ring, um, on the inside of those, um, in the threads. And, um, you know, normally, normally you would need that, but there's no, there's no real use for it here. Um, so actually, and, and I was going to leave it on there, um, because again, I didn't, didn't really matter whether it was there or not, but when I filled this thing for the first time, all right, so let's have a good look at this. I got some paint in those threads, so my bad on that. That looks kind of crappy, but whatever. All right, so what's going on here is a, obviously a barbed connector here, and, um, what it is is there's an O-ring on the outside of the bottle. And I actually tried that first because I had to, obviously, I had to drill a hole through the bottom of the bottle. And then there's a nut on the inside, which we, God, I cannot, oh, I'm trying to get a good view of it. You can kind of see it there. It's got a bunch of, I don't know, bubbles and crap on it, so it looks kind of crappy, but you can kind of see it in there. Um, but anyways, um... <laughs> So not only was that nut a total pain in the butt, uh, I made a rhyme, uh, to get in there because the, the mouth of the bottle, you know, is super rigid and, you know, there's basically no flex there. Um, so that was a real pain to get inside there. Um, and that was just the start of my um, troubles because getting it to actually thread onto that connector was so bad. Um, Reason being, there's just not much, or there was not much I had to uh, to work with as far as threads on the bottom there. So that was a total pain in the butt. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, the first time I, I put a little bit of water in here, it leaked right away. Um, there was, obviously, like I said, there was only one O-ring on the outside. And even though I cranked on that nut really, really hard to get it really tight onto that fitting, it still was leaking. So I was like, oh my God, what do I do? Well, so I grabbed the O-ring out of that fitting, dropped it inside the bottle, and screwed around with it for probably a half an hour trying to get it onto the, those threads. No joke, a half an hour. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, <coughs> and the reason why it took so long is because uh, that O-ring fits really tightly on those threads. And I was trying to manipulate it onto the threads with just a, a Phillips screwdriver that I've got. Or sorry, a regular flathead screwdriver that is like, it's like a two foot long screwdriver. It was the only thing I could get inside there to, you know, really do anything with. So not only was that difficult, but then threading the nut on with even less threads to work with because that O-ring was taking up space... <laughs> was not fun. So again, about a half an hour just to try to get that through there. And I mean, I'll be honest, that was the, that was the toughest part about this whole project. And that was the only thing that I didn't know if it was really going to work. And maybe that makes sense because of exactly what this is and what I tried to do, but I did it and it worked. And luckily when I filled it that second time, I breathed a sigh of relief because it worked. And I ran it for an hour and there was no leaks and I was super pumped and it was basically a victory. Um, anyway, so let's talk to you a little bit about what I did here. Um, I needed to steady the bottle, and um, 
you know, but I also didn't want it to be, to look super cluttered in here. And, um, yeah, I just, you know, this is kind of like the centerpiece, right, to the build. So I wanted to uh, not, uh, I don't know, cover it with a whole lot of stuff. So anyways, I made this little bracket down here. Um, and that bracket is made out of the side of the case as well, just like the, uh, the, little, the little brackets up there. Um, and what I did actually was drill a hole, and man, that was a pain in the butt too, because I didn't have the right drill, or the, yeah, the right size drill bit. So I really had to screw around with that forever. But I drilled the hole so that I could run the um, bulb connector through it. And then the, um, the hose just fits up against it snug. So that... That sort of steadies the bottom. Um, I mean, you know, this this is not meant to be taken to your friend's house. You know, I mean, I don't know how many PCs really are, but um, you know, you, get, you just have to be a little bit more careful with this. You can't be kicking this thing over and you know expecting things to to work out well. Um, but anyways, uh, so that's the <clears throat> excuse me, that's the bottom bracket. Uh, the other thing that I did, and this got a little wonky. Uh, and I'm, I'm not entirely happy, uh, but it is what it is, and I, I decided to go so cheap that, you know, I just had to deal with it. Um, I noticed up here in the corner, uh, I really could have put an SSD back there because it fits basically perfectly, and it would have looked a lot better, I think, too. But uh, I didn't want to spend any money on this, so I didn't. So what I did was um, I took the hard drive, and I drilled two holes through, I don't know, what's the, what's the back piece called? <clears throat> like the motherboard mounting <clears throat> plate. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. Um, yeah, so I ran two holes through that thing, and it basically it uses the, I think it uses the top hole, top mounting hole for the H or the uh, the hard drive, and I think it uses this bottom one too. You know, so it's just the opposite side. Um, <laughs> and then obviously you can see the SATA cable and the. Uh, uh, I forget what the other thing is called. Um, Jesus, I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, who cares? <laughs> um, and then obviously I've got another bracket here. Uh, so this bracket again, same deal with the rest of them. This is made out of the side of the case. Uh, and I obviously I just ran one bolt. I wanted to do something a little bit differently. I kind of wanted to do it a little bit more like the bottom one where I ran, you know, the bracket out. And then and then I, I was actually working on tweak, uh, like twisting this so that it'd be flat. And then I could run the... Uh, uh, you know, I could, I could basically drop it through the um, the barbed fitting, but uh, it did not work out well at all. And mostly, it was because of the the drill bits that I used to tweak the crap out of that that bracket. So, anyways, I ended up chopping it off right there. And actually, I'm I'm, I'm more happy with this anyway because it takes up less space and you don't really see much. But obviously, it's just zip tied right to this bracket. And I mean, this is I mean, this is fairly solid. Um, so, I mean, this isn't really, this isn't going anywhere. Um, but anyways, all right, the last, probably the last major thing, and I, actually, I, I do have to admit, I don't know if I'm going to spray paint these or not. Um, these are these are just the little, you know, knockouts that um, I think they're called, well, yeah, they're probably like a knockout, right, uh, for your cards. And um, I don't know why they were all gone. I, I don't know. I, I probably screwed around with the um, uh, the PCI slots, a bunch or something and so I got rid of them all and so it looked really stupid with just you know nothing there um, <clears throat> I could have probably done kind of the same thing and you know use the side of the 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 PC to you know maybe make something there but um, these are just uh, I don't know what you, again I don't even know what you would call these pieces they're but they're from other um, they're from other PCs and we'll see. I don't know. Again, maybe I'll spray paint those or who knows. I just haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with those. That's, that's kind of one of the finishing touches though that I'm not going to worry so much about. Um, but anyways, all right. Uh, a couple last things here before I, I powered up. Um, if you notice here, so we've got a, uh, there's a hole right here uh, and a hole down here at the bottom and then oh, the, the hinges. Jeez, I almost forgot about these. Uh, these were about a buck a piece. Um, you know, I just used some hardware. Uh, some nuts. I'll be honest, uh, because this frame is so flimsy, I wish I wouldn't have done this. I, I really don't. I wish I would have not used hinges at all and just used four uh, thumb screws type, you know, type things. Um, <clears throat> you know, it would be a more of a pain in the butt for when you actually want to open up the case, but I don't plan on opening up the case a whole lot. So, 
Um, you know, had I had I thought about that beforehand, I wouldn't have gone this route because again, I the the frame is just really wimpy, and I don't like the weight of the plexiglass on those hinges. But again, you know, that the other the, the the same argument can be said for these though. I'm not going to be opening this thing very much, so who really cares? But um, it does, you know, that these swing really well, and I was actually fairly happy with uh, for, with these. Um, and then obviously, so I do have these thumb screws. I had to get really long ones um, because this plexiglass is actually fairly thick. <clears throat> um, those were a total pain in the butt to thread in the first time, but that's because I don't have the proper tools for it, which is the story of my life. Ha <laughs> ha! That joke can be taken a lot of ways. And I have parts sticking out of my arm. What the heck? Jesus. Stabbing myself with parts of my case um anyways <laughs> um all right so yeah i mean that's that's basically it i've already got the um <coughs> the other side uh the other side has the thumb screws in and i'm not gonna bother taking those out they look you know they look great over there all right so um by the way went with the uh the plexiglass obviously because uh, otherwise how are you gonna be able to see in here right sorry about the glare um I did the top two. Obviously, I cut uh, cut this big rectangle out. I just used a Dremel tool with a cutting wheel. Um, <laughs> it uh, it was uh, it was not looking very pretty the first time I did this. Um, so it looks significantly better now that I've uh, touched it up. And I actually used a really big file to just file down all the sharp edges because this looked re or it was really really sharp. Uh, when I was done with it. And I did the same thing with the front. Maybe that was obvious already. Uh, again, just wanted to have more visibility for the bottle. Um, so I chopped out, you know, a ton of this stuff. Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention this too. Um, but this piece here, um, this is another uh, piece of... Oh, I'm making it dirty. Looks so pretty. Looks so pretty right now. Um, <clears throat> that's just a piece that I grabbed or cut from the side of the uh, case, you know, just like, you know, like that, like the brackets and all the other crap that I uh, chopped out of the case. So, uh, and they're fairly solid, but um, let's, oh yeah, last, last part, geez, the power switch. Um, the original power switch, let me see if I've got it here, was, you know, cheap and garbage and, oh no, let's not bother. That's going to take too long to find it, but Anyways, um, <clears throat> this this obviously the the whole front panel uh, had a plastic, you know, part molded part, and um, that's where the power button and the reset button was at, and the the hard drive lead and all that BS. And I didn't want to use that, uh, mostly because I didn't want to try to spray spray paint plastic and expect it to look good. I didn't think it would, so um, I skipped that. But anyways, I bought this little switch here, and I think this looks really freaking cool, but. Um, and actually, I, I really lucked out because this uh, power switch was um, was not right for what I needed it to do. Basically, I accidentally stopped my video. Oopsies. Anyways, what I was saying there was uh, the switch when I originally bought it, you could press it all the way in and it would stay pressed in. And that doesn't work with a PC because if you hold the power button, it resets the freaking PC. And... So basically it would power up and then it would power down and then it would power up and power down. Anyway, I, I took, I had to take the switch apart and, um, that was, that was really annoying, but, uh, and I had to take some parts out, some parts out of it, but, uh, I got it to work. And so now, um, let's fire this up, but, um, there you have it. It's even got a little built in led. I had to wire that up too. That was super easy. I had to wire the switch. Basically, I just used the old wires. If you can see the, the braided blue and white and then the black and red, those are just the old uh, wires that I wired up to the back of the switch. Uh, and soldered those on. That went really well, too. Um, I thought I was going to be super rusty with uh, soldering, but you know it worked out really well. But anyways, all right. Here it is. It works. It's alive. It runs. The water just dumps in from the top. Um, again, I don't know. I kind of like the uh, the bubbles. <laughs> I don't know. It reminds me of a fish tank a little bit, I guess. Um, 
But yeah, uh, so obviously it just, uh, you know, it pulls in the water from the bottom. Uh, and then it runs up. Oh, that was one other thing I want to talk about. I could have, I thought about reorienting this so that it would basically go straight from the bottom of the bottle. You know, and all I would have had to do was twist the pump so that it faced, uh, so that the top connector there, you know, would face the water block. But then when I messed around with the tubing, I was like, I don't know, that looks kind of cool. And there was already a bunch of uh, ventilation holes in the bottom, so I just used those as mounting holes. There's actually one screw on the other side, too, that you can't see from here. But um, So, you know, this thing is mounted. That thing is actually super solid. Um, but, yeah, so then obviously it runs into the water block, loops around, I don't know, does some fun stuff, and then I zip-tied the... Um, you know, the, the hose that runs out, and then, you know, there's the hard drive in the way, and then it comes up through the top, obviously into the radiator, uh, and then back into the bottle. Um, the other kind of really freaking cool thing about this, too, let's just shut this off, and I'll show you. Uh, so the other cool thing about this is, just because of the, the water level, um, it empties back out of the radiator, and the water level, obviously, it's the same, which is probably what, exactly what you'd expect. It makes it so that it's actually super easy to, uh, to uh, get the water out of the reservoir. Um, the tubing, like I said, I had about three feet of extra tubing. And um, so you can just drop the tubing in through the top all the way to the bottom of the, uh, the reservoir and then use a, you know, a siphon, basically, to siphon the water back out. So... Um, with all that said, again, I'm not sure if I'm going to, I actually do have some brown dye to put into the water to make it look, you know, like Dr. Pepper, but, um, and you know, if it works out <clears throat> and it looks cool, maybe I'll, I'll leave it or I'll do that. And, uh, you know, if I don't like the dye, the best part is I've got so much extra tubing that I can run all this tubing again. Cause I'm worried that the, uh, the dye is going to actually dye the tubing. But, um, you know, if that happens, like I said, I've got so much extra tubing that I can just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, rerun new tubing. So we'll see. But anyways, that's what I did. It was fun. This is probably the most fun, uh, well, definitely the most fun PC building project I've ever done. Um, yeah. So uh, anyways, hopefully this explained uh, why I do the crazy things I do and it probably gives you some insight into how much I love Dr. Pepper. <laughs>